Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today I will not show you how to create a single new effect. Instead, I want to show you how you can improve your overall After Effects workflow to make creating any effect easier. I'm talking about keyboard shortcuts. Woo! Watch it! Man. Now, there are a ton of keyboard shortcuts in Adobe After Effects, more than I could or probably would even want to remember. However, there are a few essential keyboard shortcuts that I think you really should know. This is going to be a pretty basic tutorial for Adobe After Effects, but obviously some of the keyboard shortcuts are for more intermediate techniques, so if you do come across something that you don't quite understand, go check out all of the beginner tutorials I have on my channel already and I guarantee it'll make more sense after that. But enough of me talking, let's jump right into the tutorial so I can show you my top 10 keyboard shortcuts for Adobe After Effects. Uh-oh. This is not gonna end well. There are four basic tools that are fundamental to using After Effects and you should really know these shortcuts. Press V on your keyboard for the selection tool. Your cursor will turn into an arrow and you can select elements and move them around in your preview window. Press H on your keyboard for the hand tool. You can use this tool to adjust the position of your preview window and move around the composition. Press Z for the zoom tool. This tool allows you to draw a rectangle around the area you want to zoom in and magnify it. Finally, pressing W activates the rotation tool. This tool allows you to rotate any element around its current anchor position. If you're allergic to shortcut keys, you can also find these four tools on the left side of the main menu bar. While you can drag the current timeline indicator around to move through your composition, there are a number of shortcut keys to do this much quicker. Press page up or page down or on a Mac, command right and left arrow to move a single frame forward or backward. If you hold down the shift while pressing these shortcut keys, the cursor will jump 10 frames forward or backward. If you need to duplicate a layer or a number of layers, the simplest way to do this is to select the layers and then simply press Ctrl D or Command D on a Mac and BAM! A new copy of your layers is available and already selected for you to position in your scene. This shortcut is extremely useful and you can easily replicate any layer as many times as you need. If you hate things being easy, you can also find the option to duplicate in the main menu under Edit Duplicate. I won't go into detail here on what pre-compositions are. I have a separate tutorial for that that you can check out. To pre-compose any number of layers, simply select them all and then press Ctrl Shift C on Windows or Command Shift C on the Mac to pre-compose them all into a single new layer. Give your pre-comp a new name and then just hit OK or press Enter and BAM! Done! If using three keys at the same time is a bit difficult for you, you can also pre-compose all selected layers by going to the main menu and selecting Layer Pre-Compose. Every layer has a set of basic properties like position, scale, rotation and opacity. The easiest way to access these properties is to select the layer and then press P to show the position, press S to show the scale, R to show the rotation and T to show the opacity property. You can then make the desired adjustments and are on your way to some awesome visual effects. Here's a quick tip. If you hold down Shift while pressing any of these shortcut keys to reveal a property, the property is added to the list of already visible properties. Super useful! If you don't do super useful, you are welcome to go over to the left side of the layer, expand the little twisty and drill into all of the layer properties to dig up whatever you're after. Sometimes you want to quickly find the properties of a layer that you have animated. You can simply select the layer or layers in question and simply press the U key to reveal all animated properties. You can then easily access all animated properties and work with the keyframes that you have set up. If you press U again while the layer is still selected, you can collapse all of the revealed properties again. 
This is especially useful if you've worked in your composition for a little bit and a lot of layer properties are expanded and your workspace is kind of cluttered. Simply press Ctrl A or Command A to select all layers and then press U to collapse all properties. Bam! Your workspace is nice and tidy again. Once you do have a number of keyframes revealed in your timeline, you likely want to navigate through them. While you could just drag the current timeline indicator around, this is tedious and error prone and you're likely to miss the exact frame you're after. A much simpler way is to use the J and K keys on your keyboard to navigate to the previous or the next visible keyframe. Note that this will take all properties with keyframes into account that are currently visible in your timeline. This makes it super simple to modify your keyframes precisely. While working on your composition, you will likely zoom in and out of your preview window like a maniac to make sure your effect is properly set up. Once you want to reset your preview window to the default view, you can zoom back out and try to reposition everything as best as you can manually. That however can be a major pain in the ass. If you don't enjoy your butt hurting, you can simply press Alt plus forward slash or Option plus forward slash on the Mac to reset the preview window to match the size of your composition. If you do enjoy a little bit of pain, you can come over to the bottom left of your preview window and select Fit up to 100% from this drop down option. If you have a solid, a camera, a null or an adjustment layer in your composition, you sometimes want to go back to editing its settings. The quickest way to bring up the settings dialog box for a layer is to select the layer, here I'm selecting a solid layer, and then press Ctrl Shift Y or Command Shift Y on the Mac to open up the layer settings. If you like convenience as much as I like Brussels sprouts, which is not at all, you can also select your layer and then navigate to the main menu and go to layer solid settings. The name of this menu option will change depending on what type of layer you have selected. You can define at what frame your composition starts and ends with the begin and end workspace markers at the top of the timeline window. The easiest way to define the precise start and end frame for your comp is to move the current timeline indicator to the desired start position and then press B to move the begin marker for the active work area. Then navigate to where you want the composition to end and press N on your keyboard to move the end marker for the active work area. Finally, you will likely want to right click on the work area and select Trim Comp to Work Area to apply the newly defined start and end times. If that went too fast and speed makes you nauseated anyways, you can also manually drag the begin and end markers for your active work area with your mouse. Once you're finally done creating your visual effect, like this cool explosion here, you probably want to render out your composition. To add the current composition to the render queue, simply press Ctrl Shift forward slash or Command Shift forward slash on the Mac. After Effects will open up the render queue and add the current composition straight into it, ready to be rendered out. The only thing that is left to do is to change the output settings and then hit the render button. If your fingers start hurting from all of this key pressing, you can also, with your composition opened, go to the main menu and select Composition Add to Render Queue to achieve the exact same effect. And that is my top 10 keyboard shortcuts for Adobe After Effects. I highly recommend you start using them. They will make your workflow so much more efficient and more organic and it will be a lot easier to create some really cool visual effects. I really hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. Please remember to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button up there, hit that like button and share the video around. It really helps out a lot. And as always, you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later.